Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about how to build a time series model in IBM SPSS. But even before I demonstrate how to build a time series model using SPSS, I request all of you to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. What exactly do we mean by a time series model? When the values of a particular variable are dependent on time, then we can consider such a data as time series data. As you can see here in the screen, I've got four variables. The first variable is the year variable, <clears throat> excuse me. The second variable is month, third variable is date, and the last variable is about the subscribers for the market. So there are five years of data starting from January 99. And if I scroll to the last record, you can see here, we have information till December 2003. The number of subscribers would be 11,549. So we have five years of data of number of people who have subscribed to a particular service. This is monthly level data, and we would like to build a time series model for the next three months. When I say next three months, what I mean is I want to build a time series model for January, February, and March. So with this background, let us proceed to build a time series model. What is the first step in building a time series model? The first step in building a time series model is to visualize whether or not there is a trend or seasonality in the data. To check whether there is trend or seasonality in the data, we can go to the analyze menu, then choose the option forecasting. Once I choose the option forecasting, SPSS displays a lot of options. I can choose the option sequence charts. Once I choose sequence charts, let me reset this. You can see here, all the variables that are present in the data set are listed in the canvas on the left-hand side. And to the canvas on the right-hand side, you can see empty boxes. Under the variables list, I will choose the last variable subscribers because I want to see whether there is an increasing trend in the number of subscribers or whether there's a decreasing trend in the number of subscribers. In the x-axis, I want to see the variable date. So it's a very simple time series plot that I'm constructing. The variable of interest is used under the variables list. And under the time axis label, you can choose the five years of data under the date column. With this selection, I can click on OK. In the output window, SPSS gives us this particular plot. As you can see here in the x-axis, we have information from January 99 all the way to January 2004. We have five years of data. And in the y-axis, we have subscribers for each market. You can clearly see there is an increasing trend in the data. There is no seasonality as such that we can observe, but clearly there is a trend in the data. So this is how SPSS makes it very, very easy for us to observe whether there is a trend in the data set or not. Once we are through with the first step, that is to plot a time series plot, the next step would be to build a model. How do we build a model in SPSS? Let me open up the data editor window. This is the data editor window in IBM SPSS. I can click on the analyze menu, choose the option forecasting. Here you see different options. I will choose the second item from the top, which is create traditional models. I'll repeat, go to analyze menu, choose the option forecasting. And the second option from the top here is create traditional models. 
I can reset all the options here and go to the variables tab. In the left hand side, all the variables are displayed. In the right hand side, SPSS is asking me to supply the dependent variable. The dependent variable here is subscribers for market one. You can see here method of choosing the best model is expert modeler. What expert modeler does is from among the range of time series model, it identifies the best fitting model and gives us the result. If you click on the drop down menu, you have two additional options, namely exponential smoothing as well as ARIMA model. You can choose exponential smoothing or ARIMA model to build a custom model. Here, I will go by the default option of expert modeler. I want to build a time series model for subscribers. You can choose any number of variables. I will stick to one variable here. I can next go on to the save tab and click on predicted values, lower confidence limit, and upper confidence limit. What does this do? The moment you choose to save predicted value LCL and UCL, SPSS will generate three new columns in the data set, namely the predicted number of subscribers, the lower confidence limit, as well as the upper confidence limit. The last of the option here is options. You can see here forecast period. I'll click on the second option here. First case after end of estimation period through a specified date. You have to enter the date till which you want SPSS to generate the forecast values. I will give the month as three. My apologies. The, the year here, which is the first field here is year. Under the year field, I can enter 2004 because I want to generate the predictions till March of 2004. And therefore, under the month field, I will be entering three. Three refers to the third month, namely March. And the year obviously refers to the year which I want SPS to generate predictions for. With this selection, you can go ahead and click on OK. SPSS displays a lot of useful information here. Let us go over these tables one step at a time. In the model description table, SPSS says HALTS model. What is this HALTS model? A HALTS model, SPSS has run different model and from among all these options, a HALTS model has been identified as the best fitting model for predicting the number of subscribers for the first market. Now, the second table here is the model fit statistic. You can see here SPSS reports different fit statistic like stationary R square, R square value, Ramsey value or the root mean square error, mean absolute percentage error, the maximum absolute percentage error, mean absolute error, maximum absolute error, the normalized BIC value. I will be drawing your attention to two important fit statistics, uh, fit statistic here. The first being stationary R square. Stationary R square is very, very important. Whenever there is a trend or seasonal pattern, we prefer stationary R square as compared to ordinary R square. You earlier observed that when we plotted the time series plot, there was clearly a trend in the data. So it makes more sense for us to look at the stationary R square here, which is 0.262. We, will, we can look at stationary R square and ignore the quotient of determination value. How do we interpret stationary R square? To interpret stationary R square, we have to remember what is the range of stationary R square. Stationary R square lies between 
minus infinity to 1. If the stationary R square value is negative, it means that the baseline model is better than the model under consideration. In our case, the stationary R square value is plus 0 0.262. Since it's a positive value, we can go ahead and say that the Holtz model is better than the baseline model. We can also look at the mean absolute percentage error. What is the threshold that we need to choose? Usually, a MAP value of less than 5% is considered to be a good model. I repeat, if the MAP value is less than 5%, it means that the error is low and the prediction accuracy is on the higher side. If the MAP value is greater than 10%, we don't consider the model to be predicting well. It is an indication that the model is an inaccurate model. Let me scroll down. You can see the model statistics here. There's a very important model statistic, which is called as the Young Box statistic. It reports the statistic value, the degrees of freedom, as well as the P value. The P value is 0 0.932. Since the P value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the model fits the data well. If you fail to reject the null hypothesis, it means that the model fits the data well. On the other hand, if you reject the null hypothesis, it means that the model does not fit the data well. So clearly here, the p-value is bigger than 0 0.05, and therefore, I will go with the null hypothesis and claim that the Holtz model fits the data well. You can see here, there is a graph. In the x-axis, we have the time. The red line represents the observed data, and the blue line represents the forecast value. A better way of interpreting this would be to go to the data editor window. In the data editor window, you can see three new columns have been generated by the expert modeler. What is this 3,750? This 3,750 is the expected number of subscribers predicted by the Holtz model. And it is dead accurate here. The actual number is 3,750. The predicted number is also 3,750. You also see two additional columns, namely the lower confidence limit as well as the upper confidence limit. When you scroll down, you can see here, under the actual column, there are blank values for Jan 2004, Feb 2004, as well as March 2004. But when you look at the predicted number of subscribers, the Holtz model predicts that the expected number of subscribers in the month of January 2004 is 11,563. The expected number of subscribers for Feb would be 11,577. And for the March, the expected number is 11,590. You can also look at the LCL and the UCL values respectively. I have built this model using the expert modeler. You can obviously experiment with different options, namely exponential smoothing as well as ARIMA model to see if there is a better model than the Holtz model, which can be chosen as the champion model. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. In this video, we have looked at a time series model. How do we use the sequence plot? How do we interpret the stationary R square as well as the MAP value? We have also looked at whether the model fits the data well or not through the Young Box statistic. With this, I will take leave. I request you to like, share, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching this particular video. Have a great day.